Hello, 10th class. Welcome to an English Kaksha again. Today we are going to do your next poem, Animals, that is beautifully composed by a very famous American poet, Walt Whitman. In this poem, he shows the admirable qualities of animals like quietness, innocence, and contentment. He is so appreciative that he wants to shun the world of human beings and prefers to live with them because he thinks human beings in their frenzied race of materialism have not only lost their peace of mind but their basic qualities also. Now at this point we will see what kind of feelings he was having for animals. So watch the video very carefully and if you have not subscribed the channel, subscribe it first and then like the video. Animals is a very sensitive poem that is written by Walt Whitman. So let's see what kind of poet is Walt Whitman. Walt Whitman was an American poet, essayist and journalist. He is among the most influential poets in the American canon, often called the father of free verse. He won many awards for his literary work. Now we will see what is given in this poem. In this poem, the poet emphasizes a number of admirable qualities of animals and indirectly condemns the behavior of human beings. Condemns means criticizes. He conveys the message that animals are better creatures than humans and he wishes to live with them. Now we will read the poem and we will see what kind of feelings he was having for the animals. So let's start from stanza 1. I think I could turn and live with animals. They are so placid and self-contained. I stand and look at them long and long. Let me tell you the difficult words first. I think, I is the poet here. I think I could turn. Turn means move in a different direction. And live with animals, they are so placid. Placid means not easily upset or excited. And self-contained. That means complete in itself or not depending on others. Right? I stand and look at them long and long. What is given in these lines? Let's see. Here the poet thinks that he could turn. Turn means to move so as, as to face or to go in different direction. Here the poet so far is living with human beings. But now he wants to change the way he was living and he wishes to live with the animals instead of human beings. Why? Because he thinks that animals are not easily upset or excited. Here it is given placid and self-contained. It means animals are not easily upset or excited. And they are not depending on or influenced by others. That's why the poet stands and looks at the animals for a long time. Here it is given long long. That means for a long time. Right? Let's see what kind of qualities the poet wants to show in this second stanza. They don't sweat and whine about their condition. They don't lie awake in the dark and weep for their sins. They don't make me sick discussing their duty to God. Here they refers to animals. And sweat means to be in state of great anxiety. And whine means grumble or complain. First we will see these two lines. They don't sweat and whine about their condition. It means the poet says that animals are self-satisfied and self-contained. Right? So that's why they are not having any anxiety or they never complain about their condition. They don't lie awake in the dark and weep for their sins. Lie awake means sleepless night in the dark and weep for their sins. Sins means crimes. Fine. So what is given here? Here the poet says that they are innocent. In these lines he want to show their innocence. The poet says that animals are innocent and they don't commit any sin or crime. That's why they don't have to repent upon their actions. And therefore they never have a sleepless night in the dark or shed tears upon their crimes to pray to God for forgiveness as human beings do. Fine. Now we will see these lines. They don't make me sick 
discussing their duty to god here the poet says that any discussion on human beings duty towards god makes the poet sick because these discussion often led to disputes hatred and violence among the people but on the other hand animals are free from hypocrisy they never show such kind of things so in these lines he is showing that animals are free from hypocrisy right now we will see stanza 3 not one is dissatisfied not one is demented with the mania of owing things not one kneels to another no to his kind that lived thousand of years ago what is given here not one is dissatisfied dissatisfied means not happy not one is demented with demented demented means wild or irrational here the poet says that animals are self satisfied and happy they don't have any crave for the materialistic things this is very very important phrase the mania of owing things here actually he wants that animals are not having any crave for the materialistic things as human beings have and in this race human beings are losing their basic attributes or basic values right and he says that human beings are maddened to accumulate more and more things which makes them restless but whereas animals are considered they don't have any crave for the materialistic things that's why they are not losing their peace of mind right now we will see these lines not one kneels to another not to his kind that lived thousand of years ago here in these lines paul shows the quality of equality he says no animal kneels to another or bows to another because all of them enjoy equal status and they don't bow in the memory of their ancestors as human beings do right see stanza 4 no one is respectable to me and i accept them they bring me token of myself they evince them plainly in their possession here token token means things that represent facts qualities or feelings or you can say as we exchange the gifts or uh, things to each other to show our feelings that is also token right evince means reveal the presence of and plainly means simply here token of myself token of myself actually implies the virtues or basic values of human beings like satisfaction equality calmness sincerity innocence and according to the poet human beings have lost all the qualities but animals are having or they have preserved these qualities right so let's see what is given in these lines here the poet appreciates the relation of animals and believes that once the qualities found in animals were human qualities and human beings have given up these virtues but animals have preserved these qualities right now we will see stanza 5 i wonder where they get those tokens did i pass the way huge times ago and negligently drop them negligently means due to lackness or due to carelessness here in this stanza the poet actually believes that in the good old times or in the past time human beings had the virtues of kindness contentment innocence selflessness which they have lost with the passage of time that's why he is saying that i wonder where they get those tokens the feelings that the animals are showing that are tokens but human beings have lost all the qualities which they have lost completely now these qualities are to be found among animals and poet remarks that animals have picked up these virtuous qualities which were dropped down by the human beings by their carelessness that's why he is saying that he wants to live with the animals and he want to shun the world of human beings right so this is from the poem now we will see what kind of literary devices are used in this poem first is alliteration i stand and look at them long and long here l l is repeated that's why it is alliteration i wonder where they get those tokens 
वेयर डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू वंडर एंड वेयर दे एंड दोज एंड टोकन हेयर टी एच टी एच इज रिपीटेड दैट्स वाइट इज एलिट्रेशन सेकेंड इज रिपीटिशन आई स्टैंड एंड लुक एट दैम लॉन्ग लॉन्ग फुल वर्ड इज रिपीटेड लॉन्ग लॉन्ग दैट इज रिपीटिशन वन मोर थिंग पन इज ऑल्सो यूज हेयर पन मीन्स अ वर्ड यूज टू क्रिएट अ रिटोरिक और ह्यूमरस अफेक्ट विच वर्ड इज यूज हेयर लॉन्ग एंड लॉन्ग फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम ही वॉज स्टैंडिंग एंड लुकिंग एट द एनिमल्स दैट इज पन राइट ना वी विल सी नेक्स्ट इज द यूज ऑफ एनाफोरा दे डू नॉट इट इज रिपीटेड दे डू नॉट फाइन वेयर इट इज रिपीटेड इट इज गिवन इन स्टैंडर्ड टू दे डू नॉट स्वेट दे डू नॉट लाइ दे डू नॉट मेक राइट सो दिस इज एनाफोरा एंड नॉट वन इज ऑल्सो रिपीटेड इन स्टैंडर्ड थ्री नॉट वन इज डिसफाइड नॉट वन नीज टू एन अदर राइट सो दैट्स वाई एनाफोरा इज यूज इन स्टैंडर थ्री नेक्स्ट इज मैटफर दे ब्रिंग मी टॉकन ऑफ माई सेल्फ हेयर कंपेरिजन इज गिवन ऑफ द लॉस्ट फीलिंग्स लाइक इनोसेंस ऑनेस्टी एंड कंटेंटमेंट दैट्स वाई मैटफर इज यूज हेयर सो दिस इज फ्रॉम द पोएम एंड दीज काइंड ऑफ लिटरेरी डिवाइस आर यूज इन दिस पर्टिकुलर पोएम आई थिंक ईच एंड एवरीथिंग इज क्लियर टू यू थैंक यू